What you just heard is the voice of Jamal Johnson, who is the father of Umar Johnson. I'll play it again. It was only about a minute and a half, but I want you to now hear it in the context that it was spoken. He was speaking to his son, Umar Johnson. He had recently experienced, Jamal Johnson had recently experienced the passing of his mother, who is Umar Johnson's grandmother. And there was some family drama surrounding the circumstances, which we're all familiar with to one extent or another. And the result of that drama was Jamal Johnson making a YouTube video, which he's since taken down from his channel, but the internet never dies. Um, He disowned his son on camera in May of 2018. He disowned his child and said, you're dead to me. To hold our kids accountable, to be treated with respect, and not to let them think that they can keep doing it and there's not going to be any accountability. We've all made mistakes. We've all hopefully sought some apology for that mistake. But don't ever let your child make you think that because of your human feelings that they have the right to treat you like a dog. And if you do, then believe me, that dog will bite you one day. So one thing to do with a rabbit dog Get rid of it. And that's rabbit, whether in mental, spiritual, or psychological. You gotta put it down. And if that means to cast them out of your life, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. I love all of my children. But God knows, and I say that. Sincerely, when I feel threatened, when I feel extremely hurt, and I know it's intentional, when I feel extremely disrespected, and I know it's intentional, there's only one recourse. You're dead to me. Have a good day. I hope you understood my meaning of this video. And I don't plan to have many more like this, but I think it's something we all need to think about. Take care. He said the only option to deal with a rabbit dog in reference to his son 
is to put him down. And I know a whole lot of things Umar Johnson has said are coming through your mind right now. If you've been watching and listening, supporter or not, you've heard Umar Johnson say certain things about um, getting rid of a certain population of undesirables who can't be reformed. Um, he recently said that his job is to transform the minds of the coon, who is the most despicable African on the planet. You hear, matter of fact, you know what? I'm a teacher. I don't like telling people what to think. I like teaching. So let me present to you some more information so that you can hear something. That is not dangerous in my hair, you coon. Okay? That is not dangerous. Okay? How does a person go from pointing out that you have what could be dangerous in your hair? I know what that is. I actually suggested a few weeks ago, we might get a head cleaning in one of my first videos about this. I said, you need to get your head cleaned. And it looks like you did. But um, how does a person go from being a criticizer to a coon. I mean, a coon. Now, you you all know, like, you know, originally coon was called to us by white people because we were black and at night, all you could see was our eyes, so they call it coon. Okay. But nowadays, a coon in the African American community, we have adopted that word, which is crazy to me. I was crazy at one point, too. I don't use the word anymore. Um, a coon is supposed to be somebody who's a traitor of their race, of our race. Someone who um, would probably go and reveal plans of an uprising or an escape or something like that. So a person has been dehumanized and separated from their humanity so much that for them to point out that there's, excuse me, white specks in your hair now makes them a hater and a traitor of the race. What happened? You know, what, what happened, Jamal Johnson, when your mother died that made you disown your son publicly? And you, you, you deleted the video from your YouTube, which is classic narcissistic behavior. Uh, listen. Classic narcissistic behavior is to remove evidence of your behavior because what narcissists like to say is, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. That didn't happen. That was audio manipulation. Oh, you paid somebody to lie. That sort of thing. Um, so I, I, I didn't expect to find it on your channel, and I didn't. But I was Let me able turn to back. find it because anti-Afros Bengalis made a video about it a year ago two years ago, I can't remember, and added her commentary to it. And I remember when I f first heard this video, it came up in my recommendations from your channel, Jamal Johnson. And I felt so sad for a little boy who grew up in homeless shelters begging his mom and grandma for $2 to go to the movies so he could be there all day to have something to do because there obviously was nothing else constructed for him to do. That's not a situation where there's a father involved, but for that same little boy to grow up into a man and tell the world that what black children are diagnosed with every day is really ain't no daddy at home disorder. And in one of his earliest recordings say that the reason why he succeeded academically was because of his father's involvement in his life, yet later say they were in shelters. It's a huge contradiction to me. But then for you as a man, I don't care what, you experience with your son. You're still the adult. He's still quote unquote the child in your dynamic. Your responsibility is to heal that relationship and your responsibility is to be a better example. Now you don't go on 
an international broadcast like YouTube and make a video disowning him saying, you're dead to me. But then you take no responsibility for his behavior today. Because you're in my comments sloughing off responsibility. And I'm ashamed of you. As an activist, how dare you go out and fight for the rights and the freedom and justice and equality of black people, yet you have not done your part in raising your own son and taking responsibility for that relationship the way it is and how it affects the world. I'm ashamed of you. As a black woman, as a mother, raising a child by myself, I'm ashamed of you. So then let's go and talk about Umar and to Umar. You're dismissed, Mr. Johnson. I don't know that you'll even, um, I know you watch my videos, but I don't know that you'll even take this message into yourself unless you watch it with a therapist because at your age, you probably are who you are. But you know what? I know people who are healing and being delivered from narcissism every single day. My mind is always blown. So now, it's obvious why Umar Johnson doesn't have the, the capability of building the relationships with people that can talk to them in a way, that can put him in a place where he talks to them in a way that deals with them as humans. Because somewhere in his background, his humanity was diminished. If his father could just disown him like that publicly, like we talking like, like this is a mob family, you know, where it's all about money, power, and respect, but you're supposed to be African. It's supposed to be about energy and relationship and family. But I can see it now. I can see how your followers allow you, Umar, to speak to them without any connection with their humanity. Because they have probably also had similar experiences with parents who were either not present or were narcissistic and took all the credit for the goodness in them and made them feel horrible and overly criticized for whatever wasn't perfect. And so to hear you speak to them is almost like their mama and daddy. It's familiar, right? So this next part is kind of important. I want to make sure we hear it together. Not dangerous. I don't have dangerous. You should be focusing on my message today. That's what's wrong with you coons. That is what's wrong with you coons. So now you're a coon. Being coons. Because you pointed out what could possibly be you are the worst Africans that have some other stuff in his hair. Some chalk, you some white so powder, some ashes. Man. You're not uneducated about Ifa or African spirituality. You're a coon. You a whole coon. It is my obligation to try to transform you and your nothingness into a somethingness that can benefit African people. Logically <clears throat> emasculated males. Listen. I wish you didn't exist, but because you do. <laughs> It is my obligation to try to transform you and your nothingness into a somethingness that can benefit African people. How does a person speak to people that way? Who've taken time out of their day to come to your dusty ass life. How do you speak to people that way? How do you say, you know, I've had this issue when I was a Christian, I had the issue, and now that I'm not, I have the same issue. When I was a Christian, I was put in the box of evangelist because I'm a woman. Although I'm licensed to preach, I was put in the box of evangelist because I'm a woman. So in, in a few churches, I've been asked to lead the evangelism groups, and I didn't mind because I also have a sales background, so I know how to sell shit. Um... But I would always teach people, you know, this thing has to be about relationship. 
We can't just go around throwing Jesus down people's throats and think they're going to accept it. We can't expect people to just come in because we say so. Maybe some things we have to understand are going to take relationship building and understanding and, and empathizing and sympathizing and knowing that you are just one step away from whatever you don't want to be. So I've come into this quote unquote conscious movement, which is a, a mainly a religious movement and spiritual movement in certain way as well, because there's a certain overwhelming um, spiritual ideology. And there's this idea that we have about going into the world and waking people up. Bobby Hemet. Bobby Hemet, I couldn't think of his name, forgive me. Bobby Hemet said in a roundabout way, it is extremely rude to turn people's alarm clocks to wake them up before it's set in its own time. And what he was saying was, you can't just go around waking people up. You got to let people wake up on their own time. That means you don't say disrespectful shit to a person who doesn't agree with you politically or spiritually or culturally. You don't say disrespectful shit like you coon. I wish you didn't exist, but since you do, I'm going to be the blessing in your life that's going to wake you up and transform you because, excuse me, my daughter knows right well, if you wake me up before it's time, it ain't going to be pretty. It's not going to be functional. I ain't going to be ready for nothing but to go back to sleep. I'm going to be grumpy. I'm going to argue and fuss. I'm going to be ugly. But if you let something to wake up, if you allow something to wake up on its own time and let the sun shine on it in the right way and the, the dew hit its nose, it wakes up refreshed and blossoming and ready. So stop walking around here knocking on people's doors and waking people up. Leave them the fuck alone. And you can't just talk to people in such a way that even if they were on the precipice of hearing what you have to say, now they reject everything because you have offended them. I've made the same mistake a zillion times, all the time. All the time I speak to people in a way that doesn't pull them in but pushes them away. Because I can be so dogmatic in my own thinking that everything I think is a fact. When in all actuality, it's really just my opinion in the broad scheme of things. So we have to be very, very uncommitted to our own ideas in such a way that we can share instead of demand. But you're looking at a man who was just two years ago publicly disowned by his own father. So you wonder why he can go around and say, you're the worst Africans to ever walk the planet about human beings. And say, I wish you didn't exist. And let me let me let you finish hearing this. I detest him, but I do not hate him. Because it was the black community that gave birth to the coon. See, but well, we have problems in the community. Well, Let me just say something real quick. You can't play this semantic game with me. You can't say you detest the coon. Or I'm going to use a different word. You can't say you detest the person who pointed out that there might be dandruff in your hair. But say you don't hate them. Because in order to detest something, detest, detest. I don't want it near me. I'm repulsed by it. Ah, I'm detested by it. I don't want it. That's not love. That's hate. That's hate. Let me think of something I detest. Mm, Darian. Leola, I do not like it. It's this Chinese fruit that smells like garbage. <coughs> it looks rotten and spoiled. Ugh. I detest it. I have no love, no compassion, no desire, no understanding for it. I don't want it in my presence. Stop fucking playing games, Umar, with smart people. Problems in the community. We have to step back and ask ourselves who gave birth to self hatred? Who Your gave mama. Birth to the coon. Now, Since you, you like know, to play that game. That the Neanderthal power structure gave birth 
to the first generation of coons. We know that. We know that the Neanderthal power structure created the disproportionality of power that exists between black and white. We know that. We know that they created the Willie Lynch syndrome. We understand that. Wait a minute. Are we still talking about the person who pointed out that you might have danger for your hair? Now we're talking about power structures. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So we're saying that if a person points out they have dandruff in, you might have dandruff in your hair, that automatically makes them of an opposing power structure, which makes them a coon. I get a little confused because I feel like in our culture, we still got this house nigga field nigga thing happening where if a person is of a certain socioeconomic background, that automatically makes them a coon if they're black. And so then we get into the same thing we dealt with in the 60s with the Black Panthers, where, you know, you had your educated ones. And you had your uneducated ones, you know, your college boys and the ones that weren't so much. And you had the ones who were from the street, you know, classifying the ones who weren't like they were weaker physically or less useful for the movement. I feel like we have this field nigga, house nigga thing happening. You know, many of you don't know Umar can't stand light skinned black people. He calls light skinned women bitches. He has to me at least light-skinned bitch um he thinks that lighter-skinned people think that they're better than darker-skinned people which i don't know where does that leave us brown-skinned people in the middle <laughs> um so oftentimes he refers to light-skinned people as coons if you're light-skinned especially if you're successful you're cool. you're if you make a certain amount of money, if you live in a certain kind of neighborhood, if you move a certain kind of way in the earth, usually tied to your education and your economics, you're a coon. Now, all of this came because somebody pointed out that he might have dandruff in his hair. We got to ask a question because I got in this habit um, around 2003 through some counseling and therapy um, that I had to heal some childhood wounds, which I recommend for everybody all the time, <laughs> over and over again. I got in the habit of asking myself why when something bothered me. Instead of jumping to conclusions or reacting, I started asking myself why. What I meant by that is I'll give you an example. One day I was in this, um, I was going through something financially um, where I had recently uh, started working a new job but wasn't really proud of the job I was working or the car I was driving or where I was living. Everything in my life kind of sucked because of some decisions I made that made me fuck up some good opportunity. And so I'm driving to work, and the work that I did was in this really beautiful area that I no longer could afford to live in. I was driving, and this big, beautiful white Escalade came and cut me off in traffic. And I looked at the driver, and it was a blonde hair, blue-eyed white woman, and she cut me off and went on about her day, and I was mad. Man, everybody. So, you know... The way she cut me off, it made me sit at a light, which I was even more pissed about. Because now I'm sitting at this light. That was supposed to be my light. And you took it from me because you cut me off. Well, I had gotten in the habit at that point, and I was about 26 then. I had gotten in the habit of asking myself why. When I got upset, so I asked myself why at this light. Why am I angry? Because this bitch cut me off. But what about her cutting me off makes me angry? Because she in that big old fancy car, she thinks she's better than me. Why do I think she's better than me? Because she in that big old fancy car, and she white. And that makes her better than me. Everybody thinks she's better than me. But why do you think she's better than you? 
because I believed everything I was told. And because of the shit I'm going through in my own life. I feel like I lost and she won. And I almost got my whole day fucked up. Because I'm really just mad. Because I didn't make the right decisions. And fucked up a bag. And let somebody catch me slipping and they cut me off at a light. And I done put into this, I done put into the atmosphere and put into the universe and put into my own mind this whole story about this woman being white and this big escalate and she thinks she better than me and they think she better than me. Everybody thinks she better than me. Well, really, I think she better than me because of my own shit. But that's what comes with healing, self-responsibility. Now, why did this person pointing out that Umar Johnson might have had dandruff in his hair Go to make him attack this person, their loyalty to black people, their worth as a human being to exist on a planet. Why? And the subsequent whys would have to come from the answer of the first one. But only you can answer that, Umar. Why did someone, pointing out that you might have dandruff, cause you to devalue their humanity? Like your father devalued yours two years ago when he said that you should be put down like you said 10% of black boys should be put to sleep. It goes down quick with you. But you're going to have to ask yourself why. And that might take you down a road of healing. Because that answer, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I come on camera looking like this because I love myself and I don't give a fuck. Listen, I got a pimple right here, another one right here. I ain't got no makeup on. Hair is halfway done. You don't know what's happening below these knees. <laughs> Look, I don't care because I love me. So if someone was to point out that I had dandruff in my hair, that wouldn't make me call them a... <clears throat> A traitor to my race and say they don't deserve to exist on the planet but since they do I'm going to take on the responsibility of enlightening them it doesn't seem very enlightened to me